I want to show you five quick tips that can transform what you can do with pivot tables. Let's go. So these are the five things. First of all, I want to make sure that you're using tables for your pivot tables. So click in your data, control T, click OK. That's the basis of your pivot table, okay? Always use a table first, because then when you go to table design and summarize your pivot table, it's using the table. You should probably give your table a name as well before you do this. Click OK. And the beauty of this is that when there's something new added, like let's go back and add something new like uh, price equals $10, whatever it might be, okay? And then you refresh your pivot table, it automatically pits it up. You don't, and the same thing happens with rows. You don't have to keep adjusting your pivot table range. So please use tables. Okay, next one. If we have quantity sold and we have product code and above that we have store code. So there's our data. Okay, and we want to put a different order in here. Well, then just drag these things around. And A3 is now the second item. Well, I'll drag it up again. A3 is now the top. A3 is now the top. And the same all the way down. Awesome. Next one. If you do filter, let's, so let's just get rid of, say, product code, just so you can see this. I want to get rid of store 105. So I untick it. Okay. The trap is, if I go back to my data and add store 106 in here and refresh, it doesn't show up because you deliberately picked stores one to four. The trick, right click, okay, in here, field settings, include new items in manual filter. All right. So now let me pick ST106 as well. It'll show up, but let's go back here, change this to ST107, refresh, right click refresh, and it shows up, okay? So make sure you would tick that box if you want new items to show up. All right, third little thing. Um, if I want a distinct count, how many different sales did we have against store one? Well, normal pivots don't have a distinct count. So right click, get data from table slash range. Close and load, load to, and choose the data model as a connection. Here it goes, the data is being loaded in. Again, give your table a proper name before you do this. But then insert pivot table from data model. Choose the existing worksheet. Put maybe the product code into the rows and how many stores did we sell those in? Well, we don't want the count of stores. I want to click on the drop down, value field settings, distinct count. Okay, so we sold A in seven different stores, A2 in five different stores, and so on. The other benefit of using the data model is that you can then go to your pivot table analyze OLAP tools and convert to formulas. And you've now got formulas that you can move wherever you want and they still work. Okay, so these are linked formulas going to the data model, which is awesome for formatting and all those sorts of things. So did you know all those? Let me know in the comments. Was there anything new in there? Which ones do you like the best? Hope you enjoy it. Catch you in the next video.